It is time for the fifth and final game, and I'm going to put myself out here. Right now, we've got Fanatics and Ralph Macchio, a.k.a. Danny LaRusso, in the finals of AKA the... A.k.a. Will Smith's kid. You'll Will never Smith's know his kid. name. In the finals here, going up against Johnny from the Cobra Kai, a.k.a. Slayer's Boxer, the, the very, very villainous Terran player in the blue. Slayer's Boxer is a legend, but in this matchup here, in the end, I think he's going to be Johnny for me. I, 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 you take your sides, you, you choose it up. We've got our Red Zerg Fanatics end spawning in the southeast. Boxer, our Blue Terran, spawning in the northeast. And this is it. The crane kick is going to come out for one of these players. I cannot believe that Sen managed to take that to a deciding game five in such a decisive fashion. It's so easy to get a little intimidated, but we saw Sen hold down in boss mode, especially when all those medevacs began to pop out, because what was so impressive to me is that when Sen did that huge crunch on Boxer's main force, that's when he started making Mutilus, had the amazing foresight to know that he would be able to get those Mutilus out in time, that he wouldn't need to continue to flood lanes, and Boxer was not prepared for that sort of mid-battle planning by Sen, and it looks like Boxer, again, going to be going for the forward racks here on Crevasse, but look at these positions weak Fnatic Sen's going to be so happy to see that that, that second backdoor base from Boxer is right next to Sen's Mutilus harass pack. That is an easy access harass. And ooh, Sen doing a bold forward hatch. Yeah, and uh, this is kind of uh, amongst the debate topics for Zergs on this map because, you know, you can go here to the back, but it's not as rich of an expansion. Some people argue, well, it still gives you the larva that you need. It's kind of like a bonus macro hatch, but we see a lot more Zergs just going, yeah. you know what, forget about it. I'm going to defend this area. Like you mentioned, <laughs> there's not this easy path because those rocks have to be taken down. So unless they're going to proxy really forward, you kind of got some room to breathe a little bit. And we are going to see the scouting go out. Sen is going to basically go uh, last position. He'll end up scouting the last position for Boxer, uh, taking that clockwise direction. And uh, Boxer is actually going to go cross now uh, from the center. Mm. And he, he must, oh, he must have seen the Overlord, I'm guessing. And so he turned back around. And uh, we'll see that the hatch is down. Uh, so we are going to also see Sen go up on the other side as well. Ooh, interesting. We see the double gas going down by Boxer. We saw a very interesting mech play that was executed by Marine King Prime to absolutely crush Sen on this very map. However, we did see that when Marine King Prime was doing that big mech play that he was very fragile at the start of the game. Read his opponent well. Red Sen and known the drones were coming out instead of any sort of ling flood, but if Sen has studied that past game, he knows that there are a couple of holes early in that play could possibly take it out. We're not guaranteed to see Boxer do a mech play, but I would not be surprised with that sort of insane flood of refineries early on. There's a second barracks going down, but still I'm not convinced that we're not going to see some sort of extra big factory play out coming. Yeah, um, it, it could possibly happen. We got the command center finishing up right here, and we'll keep an eye as uh, First Factory is indeed going down. Now, one thing to note is that we did have gas pulled here, just left one drone on it for Sen. Uh, really trying to get those minerals up right now as he is at 25, or excuse me, 30 supply to his opponent's 25. Really droning up here, more on the way, and speed is going to be coming a little bit earlier for Sen than it has in the last couple of games. So curious to see why he just uh, didn't delay uh, or decided to go this route right here. As we do have SCB going down. And now Overlord's moving into position. Really would love to peek and see what is going on here inside of Boxer's base. See that factory now wrapping up. Boxer immediately throwing down the fast star port. We see the reactor getting added. Wouldn't be surprised to see that very cool Viking play that we saw on Terminus. But it looks like Sen being a little cautious with his Overlord placement. And the third hatch goes down for Sen. We see the Evolution Chamber going down, not just for that plus one, but also to have a little bit of Banshee defense as well. Zerglings for Sen moving through the center of the map. They are going to spot the Tech Lab and Reactor at the front. So that's a great bit of information from Sen. He knows the composition he's going to be up against, not the mech that we saw from Marine King Prime. But the uh, typical Marine mix that we see from most Terran players. And man, we look at that drone count getting real high. Extra gas is getting taken at the natural expansion. And no layer quite yet. 
And you were right. We are seeing a Viking come out. Actually, he's going to choose to just go Viking and uh, Medivac. And I actually like that decision better because there's nothing in the air for the Zerg. One Viking yeah, can eventually yeah. do the same job. He's going to be able to catch at least two OVs here. And uh, whatever, he might be able to go into the base and harass as well. Still drones, drones, drones coming out. But this is where we start to see the transition from Sen. The moment that that plus one attack gets started, melee attack for the Lings, we start to see a few more Zerglings coming out. He is taking that third, the inside third, and he's still got these lings outside just watching to see what's going on. Loaded up medevac here. Viking is going to escort out, and let's see if this Overlord's going to see it, and he does catch a glimpse of it. It's too bad that we did not see that uh, Viking go out there first, but he might have a successful drop here. There are not very many lings out. He's going to drop right here in the natural. Couple lings move forward. We're going to have Queen start to do damage on that medevac, but all the Marines get unloaded. No link. 20 lings on their way. He's just going to do as much damage as he can. Also taking out an Overlord in the back. And he's got to be careful right when these links come out. He's going to move forward and he's going to load back up. No, he's going to put himself nice little choke there. He's just going to do as much damage as he possibly can in this attack. And there, the Viking manages to get uh, a kill or two on the Overlords, and it looks like he will be able to take out this final one. Oh, oh no, a little bit of a misclick there by Boxer. The drop now heading in towards the main. That Queen's sitting happily at 17 hit points, feeling oh so oh. low. But another medevac swinging in from Boxer at the natural. And the main, two hits at once. The Viking trying to swing around, pick off that weekend. Overlord and the Queen of the Expansion falls. The drop oh, in the God. main from Boxer doing huge damage. A lot of wings out right now for Sen and no queens anywhere that I can find at least we Oh, there's one at the third base, poor thing. She's the last of her kind. In the meantime, in the main box, are doing some amazing damage, just sitting between those tiny little niches in the mineral patches where he can get such a great positioning. In the meantime, Boxer now producing tanks, now adding on more barracks. The engineering bay is done. No upgrades started yet. Let's go to that drone count. Wow, amazingly, Sen is still ahead. He's getting a few more of those banelings and it's still pretty close i would give an advantage to boxer just because of those queens but you know i mean boxer did lose quite a bit in that battle we yeah, well, I mean, you know, some other things, I guess, to consider. He did take out those overlords. We saw him supply block for a lot. So a lot of the larva, once the queens were gone, had to go to the overlords. Just now he started to get some injects going. He's got a little bit of energy on that queen. Another thing to consider is those drones were not mining for a long time as they yeah. got caught up there oh, yeah. in the battle. So, you know, I, I mean, I do feel like with the nice control as he dropped and also worked on the Viking and took out the overlords, that he maybe pulled ahead just a, a little bit there because I think that really the larva is where it came down to. Like you said, those queens going down. There's not that many Zerglings out here right now and only four Banelings. We do have 20 Lings on the way. Um, but, uh, you know, now we're going to have Boxer kind of moving out. He's going to have to start thinking about a third here, I, I think, as, uh, you know, he's got to some nice saturation going on, on both of his bases. Another barracks going down. So a lot of racks right now. Uh, his army isn't huge. Huge. He's probably not gearing up for attack, but you know, I, I don't know now things have equalized so But boxer has a huge chance to swing ahead because look at this wheat the layer is just hitting halfway done without a layer yeah. There's no chance to get the mutalisks or the speed bane lanes. in other words There's no way to do the huge pressure that you always want to be doing as Zerg Sen is, weirdly enough, in defensive mode again. That is the theme of this series. Boxer's amazing ability to constantly put the Zerg on the defense instead of to be the aggressor. It is the Terran who has been the aggressor every single game, time in, time out. No speed for those Bane links. And there they are moving up, and it looks like Sen's going to try to wrap around, give him the Zerg hug before he can get sieged up. Oh, huge hit by Boxer. Wow. On the siege tanks. Oh, obliterating that Baneling count, and now Boxer is free to move ahead and start assaulting that natural expansion. Yeah, the Banelings halfway done here. We do have a few Lings, but he's got to use them together. Lings are going to move in, try to get a nice little uh -oh. cup here on the bridge. Great surround and in on the Banelings, but a pickup by the Medivacs to save an awful lot there. Even got the Siege Shank in one of those guys. Those Medivacs, uh, a few of them very low on health, but again, the Lair just finishing, and uh, that means the Spire just uh, not even down yet, actually. There it goes down, just as we mentioned it. The plus two attack is underway, so again, a lot of units 
chance here for uh, Sen, but not having the Overlord speed, that did, you know, that hurt a little bit in that battle, making some of those Banelings ineffective. And uh, he did defend very nicely, but uh, he is a little bit behind from the last time that we've seen him in this. We've already, he already had a few mutas out. Now we got plus two weapons coming out for the Terran. A lot of missile turrets going down before the mutas even go out. So the timing here, uh, I think uh, Boxer with that initial attack early on really kind of threw that off. So I wonder if Sen can just, you know, re recuperate uh, from that. You gotta admire the brilliance of boxer strategy start to finish. A lot of people are gonna see this and just think, yeah, he did some aggression at the start and that was cool, maybe I'll do that. And oh yeah, he just attacks with a lot of stuff often. I guess I'll do that. It's the fact that Boxer did that push and it meant no layer, no fast units, and in particular, no units that could shoot up so Boxer has the freedom to be aggressive when his medevac count is moderate. And then, if he, can, if he gets wrapped around, as we just saw, he just lifts up and retreats. There's always a retreat option for Boxer. Even look at him here now, with these units advancing towards, swing into the back, and then just lifting oh. up into the medevac. Now that the Spire's done, there's a little bit of a threat that he needs to be more defensive, but that's really when his tank count is so high that Zerg needs to be on the defensive foot again. I mean, every yeah. moment Boxer has some link together from his previous move that just allows him again to do a little bit more damage, and I am loving the fact that that one barracks with the tech lab gets given to the factory, and look at this at the bottom left, Boxer just patiently waiting for this one yeah. uh, hatchery to get a little bit farther down the pipeline, and then he He's gonna bum rush it and take it down. They had their watches sync. They're like, no, you've got to wait till it bing bing. And then they went in for the kill. Lings are going to stream in here. Boxer's like, it's cool. I don't need to load up. He actually could have probably taken that out. No problem. But in come the mutas and that will dispense that. Oh no, one muta goes down. Uh, this, this actually throwing him off. And look, Boxer is moving through the middle. Uh, now, we did see Sen make 10 mutas the moment that uh, the Spire finished. So he does have a few more mutas out than I think Boxer might be expecting. We're going to have another medevac loading up. And uh, this center in the middle here oh! for Boxer. Oh, no. It gets sniped out of the air. Poor Marines. Never do it coming. Oh, my gosh. Ton of damage going to be done to these forward siege tanks. One does go down. Forces a stim off of these Marines. There are only a few Banelings there to help, and they are not going to suicide their way in. We're going to have Muta swinging around. And, you know, this center can be kind of bittersweet because Sen, a guy who likes to counterattack, could easily swing around the back now that all these rocks are gone. But, oh, my God, look at the reinforcements from Boxer. Oh, swing on in. Oh, Sen needs to pick off these tanks. This is exactly what he's looking for. Getting it low on health. The Boxer, uh-oh, uh, overstimming a little bit. Only two medevacs out on the field. It's going to be hard to heal all those units up in time. Look at the natural expansion. Sen is playing so well. Huge numbers of Zerglings and Banelings at the fourth base. Huge number of Zerglings and Banelings at the natural. We see more tanks. A little vulnerable. We see another restim by Boxer to try to repel them. And a beautiful spread of all those Marines. This is nail-bitingly close we, and we see the level 3 upgrades getting started for those Marines. Likewise, we see the Zerg sitting at 2 attack, 1 armor. More Marines trying to move down to the left side. Now Sen again sends the defensive master oh in this game. God. Seeing those Marines nullifying that, shutting that down. He's got to pull back, or is he just going to go for it? Oh, a little bit of indecision. Oh, yeah, you know, he's got the opportunity to, to, to attack from two different places right now. Mutas are going to move in, take out these few Marines that are there. Siege tanks are moving forward, going to Siege. I thought we were going to see one attack through the ramp and then another attack through the other ramp, but it looks like Boxer is going to do exactly that. He stays in the middle, moves forward. There's a lot of units there. Bane like oh. do a ton of damage. A bunch of Marines killed right there, and there are still so many units here for Sen. He does have to be careful for these siege tanks that have moved forward, but I feel like he's really lowered the Marine count here. Might be able to take out the remaining Marines, do some serious damage to those siege tanks, and here he goes. And here comes Sen, he's swinging from all angles. The tanks do some huge damage to the Baneling. Sen moving in from the right side, but Boxer's positioning is absolutely brilliant. And he crushes that force from Sen. Sen now remaking 32 Zerglings. Sen's Mutilus count so low. Boxer, who patiently waited to bait the Zerg into an awkward position and then wrapped around and crushed it. And now Boxer sprinting to pick off that fourth base, sprinting to the bottom left to pick off the fifth base. And we see Sen trying to move through the center, pick off anything that he can. But Boxer has the upper hand. 
Yeah, Boxer actually, or excuse me, Sen looks like he actually is going to go in for it. A counterattack here as we just saw Command Center go down. There is a large force for Boxer just to the other side. And oh my gosh, you got to pay attention. There's one Muta, two Muta, three Mutas go down. And a bunch of Lings. And I, uh, I mean, Sen is not looking so hot in this matchup right now. It is 197 for Boxer and 132. Both players at uh, the food limit, but not necessarily maxed. Uh, of course, Boxer gets there first. And really just a few Mutas out there looking at Utica. Oh, he's going to tack up into this day. Oh, and um, tanks just annihilate the Baneling. The certainly count from Sen so high. The one Baneling lands beautifully. And it looks like Sen is going to manage to keep wow. his bottom left secured. But the hatch is long gone. It's going to be a while before Sen gets that up and running again. The main from Sen completely mined out. The back door getting low on minerals. The natural extremely low on minerals. And look at the center wow. wheat. Look at this huge force swinging in. Oh. Wow. The Karate Kid may have crane kicked himself in the face. Yeah, Mr. Miyagi's little hand clap, rub, whatever he did, it didn't quite work out here because the Mutalist numbers have increased a lot, but the ground army's just not, not a whole lot of Baneling moving forward. Oh my God, but the Baneling's hit a huge part and said, oh my God. Boxer Advances Boxer with the narrow 3-2 victory over Sen. Sen who played absolutely phenomenally in that series was unable to best the resilient, aggressive wow. power style from Boxer. I mean, that's the sort of aggressive Terran that we have not gotten the chance to see in this TSL. That is right up there with the amazing players like Thorzane, just who cannot ever take their foot off the gas pedal. Boxer with an incredible win. He will be up against the victor of Heisu Obs against tomorrow, the best of five that we'll be doing after this. But man, was that an incredible, incredible play by Boxer or what? Yeah, and again, you know, what worked for Sen in the last game that he needed to do in this game, which is basically really go in and attack that production of the Terran, he was unable to do. A lot of that had to do with the fact that Boxer got some of that early uh, aggression off, kind of delayed his opponent with those drops that came out. That worked out really good. The lair came late. The Spire came late, and so he never got his muted numbers up. And then, you know, I, I, I honestly, um, I thought that Boxer was going to have a tougher time defending that middle, despite the fact that he had a lot of uh, a, a lot of tanks and a good spread there. But what I was worried about was, you know, how effective could an attack be from two different angles? I'm not sure if Sen ever really capitalize on that it's not an easy thing to do by all means but um i mean it surprised me as boxer just completely shut it down like it was on mad lockdown nothing was going to get through there and, and just to see the infa army come back the infinity army just a boxer is pretty impressive so congratulations to slayers boxer what a great game I mean, again, should just be delighted with himself, because keep in mind that the games that Sen won were pretty solid-looking games from Sen. Just held on for a little while, and then whoosh, huge number of units. And those games that Boxer won, he had to be relentless every single yep. game. I mean, it's, that must be exhausting to play a series like that from Boxer, having to have that incredible focus. One misclick means all your Marines get blasted by a Baneling, but with that macro and the timing and the cute little Viking medevac combat shield drops, yeah. I am just so excited to see Boxer's play in these future rounds. And really, Boxer seems to be the only player who can combat the Korean curse that has just been running through the TSL. If you're Korean, you ain't going to be living long unless you're MC or Boxer. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I even want to extend some credit beyond Boxer because as of late, the entire Slayers team has really been impressing with these little oh, diamonds yeah. in the rough that have been like, oh, who is this guy? Oh my God, he's raging everyone. And uh, you know, whatever is happening over there, whatever training they are doing, certainly rubbing off on the Emperor himself. I feel like this is probably the best that I have seen him. You know, I could have mistakenly thought, oh my God, Boxer is so godlike when we first saw him face off versus Nada in the GSL. But really after that, his vulnerability 
abilities came out. His, his strengths were there, but his weaknesses were very apparent. And uh, that really looked like a refined legend like you expect. Sen, who's been doing remarkable as of late, putting up some good results, gets taken out. And, and, and this makes me happy in any best of five series in a three to two, really some phenomenal games. Really happy that uh, we got to cast those. And yes, I think we're going to take a break. And then we're going to be moving on to a TVP day. Oh, yes. Did you just say TVP? I meant you a mean... ZVP. Wait, you no, you mean an infested Terran versus Protoss. Oh, I'm so clever. Oh, see, I was I was wrong, but you made me right, and it, that you're awesome. Hey, MP, MP, anything I can do to help? <laughs> I'm actually briefly rewatching that final battle to see yes. Boxer, who's just having some amazing target fires with his tanks, to blast through all those banelings. I mean, that is hard to split your Marines themselves, but just to be able to target fire those tanks as you want, I mean, it's that little extra mile that Boxer goes that really helps him win. So whatever you do, do not go anywhere. We will be right back after a short caster voice break here at the Team yes. Liquid Star League. Yes, so uh, guys, stick around. Coming up next, Hasu Ops versus Morrow here for the PokerStrategy.com TSL 3 Saturday. We'll be right back.